introduced to the world by Bomb Soldier in 2005, pillar combos have been a staple in Falco's gameplay since pretty much the beginning of Melee time. Honestly, if you haven't once felt like it was impossible to escape Falco's down air shine combos at some point in your Smash career, then you're probably lying. Or you play Puff or something. Or you might still feel this way about Falco combos right now. Well, I've got good news for you, my friends. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you a couple ways to escape Falco's bread and butter combos. Through the use of Smash DI, it's possible to avoid getting comboed, and by paying attention to your percent, you can actually benefit off of getting hit by Falco's down air. So without further ado, let's begin! One big thing about Falco's pillar combo is that it's pretty telegraphed and predictable. After the first down air lands, most Falco players are going to shine, and after the shine, they're going to down air you back down and repeat the cycle until you're off stage or at a high percent. Because it's easy to tell when Falco is going to hit you next during a pillar combo, you can smash DI his down air and create enough distance between you and him to avoid getting hit by his up tilt or shine. The best way of doing this depends on which direction he's coming from, what character you are, what percent you're at, and where you are when you get hit. Here's what you should do if he's coming from above and you're in the air. If you're a non-fast faller that's been shined and Falco's about to down air you from above, the easiest way to escape the pillar combo is by smash DIing the down air upwards. By doing this, you'll usually be too high up to get hit by the next up tilt or shine. If you're at a higher percent where you'll still fall fast enough to get comboed into the shine, the better alternative would be to smash DI away from him. That way, you'll be too far to the side to get hit. This also works at mid and low percents. If you're a fast faller, Smash DIing up also won't really help you since you'll almost always get hit into the shine even if you smash DI super hard. So smash DIing away is also the better option here. Next, here's what you should do if you're grounded and he's coming at you with a down air. If you're standing and he down airs, smash DIing up won't do you any good whatsoever. So you probably guessed it. Your best bet is to smash DI away from him as it'll create much more space between you and the Falco. If the Falco overshoots his down air, then smash DIing behind is your best bet for avoiding the follow up shine. Up tilt still reaches though. As a whole, smash DIing Falco's down air is amazingly useful for escaping his combos because it happens in the blink of an eye, and if the Falco isn't expecting you to DI like that, they'll be thrown off and you'll be in a good position. When done correctly, you'll end up avoiding the combo and if you're at a lower percent, you'll also be able to quickly retaliate with your own attack while the Falco's stuck in landing lag. It's not impossible to beat though. If they're prepared or react to your DI fast enough, they can find ways around this. Even though there's ways around it, Smash DIing does make comboing a bit harder for Falco and makes it so that they can't go on autopilot whenever they land a hit on you, so it's definitely worth learning to do. Earlier, I talked about how it could be good to get hit by Falco sometimes, and you're probably thinking I'm crazy right now. Well, when you're at low percents and Falco down airs you while you're in the air, you're actually able to act upon landing before he can. This happens because at lower percents, if you get down aired while you're airborne, you aren't getting put into the typical tumbling animation and won't have to tech, so you're pretty much able to move instantly when you land. The great thing about knowing this is that it applies to every single spike or meteor smash in the game. As long as you're at a low enough percent, you'll be able to retaliate while your opponent's still in landing lag. It's especially useful if you're fighting a really down air heavy Falco. Sure, you're trading hits, but if you're getting a grab or a juicy hit immediately afterwards, it could be worth it. Similarly, if you're at a low percent and Falco down airs you out of your missed tech animation, you're also able to act before he can, depending on how he times the down air. I don't exactly know how it works, but I'm guessing that while you're bouncing off of the ground, you're technically airborne and since you're getting hit by a down air at a low percent while airborne, you land back on the ground without any lag. So if you ever miss a tech at low percents, usually after getting shined, being ready for this situation can be really handy. So that's everything I wanted to cover in this tutorial. If you apply all of this to your game, I guarantee you're going to get out of more Falco combos. In last week's Comet Wars, I asked you guys about Yoshi's shield. The general consensus was that there are pros and cons to Yoshi's shield that make it pretty decent overall, and he'd probably be better with a normal shield. Obviously, the game would be insane if all the characters had his shield. There'd be parries everywhere. This week's Comet Wars, I want to ask. With big tournaments like GTX and Big House coming up, how do you feel about their decisions to use or not use the UCF mod? Should it become standard since it makes every controller shield drop and dashback equally well? Or would you rather not have mods in general? Let me know what you think in the comments. 
That'll conclude things for this video. If you enjoyed the tutorial or learned something new, make sure to hit those thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching, see you next week.